and she's standing. Okay, and we are on live. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, I wasn't sure how, well, how nervous I was going to be and how I was going to go. Oh, it was great. It was but terrific. I had a good job, you know, we're always great <clears> for ourselves. <throat> but um, I, I, I just love being outside and fresh air, and it was just really nice getting to know some new people. Yeah. No, it was beautiful. The students loved it so much, they asked her to do another one next week. So we're putting together another plein air workshop for next Monday. Very good. Yeah, I offered to do a critique of them. I felt like they needed to finish their paintings before they critiqued them, and there wasn't time to finish. So then we turned it out of one of the workshops. <laughs> We're getting that, messages on here. Can they hear me share here? Internet. Sherry Small. Yeah. Sherry is watching. Hi. Okay. Hi we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and have oh, okay. oh, okay. somebody okay. sent you hey, a nice message. You again. Yeah. So I'll do a, a very quick introduction. Hey everyone, it's Peggy Kirkwood from the new studio for the visual arts here in Jupiter, Florida. We have the renowned artist Lori Snow Hine with us. We did a plein air workshop with her this oh, morning. Right. It was absolutely fantastic. Oh, right. We're simultaneously on Zoom and the new Studio for the Visual Arts Facebook Live. So everyone who's joining us on Facebook Live, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us on Zoom. And I'm going to turn it over to Lori. We had a little bit of difficulty, difficulty with some cameras, so we're actually using the computer camera. Um, but we're going to make it happen. It's good. You know, it's all good. something that's not too important yeah. to do to make it work. Okay. Hey, I'm glad you joined me and just tell you a little bit about my career as an artist. I've started at least four uh, Grand Canyon paintings. These are all plein air paintings. I did them in uh, 2019. I took a trip across the uh, United States, went out to all the national parks, and did a workshop with a plein air painter named Mitch Baird. And I stayed there and worked with him for five days. So these are some of my Grand Canyon paintings that I did when I was in that class. There's about 15, 20 more that are over at the uh, gallery that I have in Juno Beach at Driftwood Plaza. There's a, a gallery called Michelle Sabarin Gallery, and I've got a show coming up next month, and we'll be showing additional paintings as well as completely different paintings than what you see here. So, and these are, as I said, you know, I do support the national parks. I went to about 15 parks on my trip out west. And any painting that I sell for the National Parks, I give a percentage to the National Park Fund. And that means a lot to me to be able to have the parks to, to, to flourish. Okay, so that's recent. Now, we're going to say hello to Sharon Touch. Hello, Sharon. Good to see you. And I see Whitney. Okay, so the next thing, that, then I'm going to take you back in history. This goes back to about 1995, and I was an illustrator. Uh, I was actually a portrait painter before I was anything else, and when I had to go to work making a living, I ran out to do portraits, but then I got picked up by a publishing company, and the publishing company liked my portraits, and they wanted me to do a lot of illustrations. So this is one of the illustrations that I did. It was done for uh, like greeting cards and calendars. Um, there's, let's take a look at these other two over here, too. Are these oil? These are all oil paintings. Uh -huh. um, these two angels are, are two of 12 different angels that I did, and they were done for calendars as well as reading cards. Kind of this way, yeah, that's, uh, that's that work there. And let's even see the top. The top. Stay, stay, in, stay the in the picture. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this works better, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, I did that this way. There you go. Got to learn how to do this. Did not take care of there? Uh -huh. okay, okay, so, so these are, are two of the little angels I did for reading cards. The little redhead angel uh, happened to be one of my best sellers. I probably sold over 20,000 of this particular one. I did another redheaded angel that I sold over 200,000 pictures through Home Interiors. So mm -hmm. that was a situation where I didn't have to sell a painting to make money. I was actually selling my images and the right to those images. And you'll see these all over uh, Pinterest and over the internet. They're still really popular images. And there's, like I said, about 12 angels total. So that just gives you an idea for, for that. Then here, I did a whole series of Amish illustrations and images. I've, got a, I've sold quite a few of them. I've got 
this one left, and we've got five more at home. And that was for a book called The Simple Pleasures of Amish Life. So that this is right here, a little book that I've got. They showed one of the other paintings that I did. And then the whole book is filled with different paintings. I did a lot of farm animals. That's my grandson when he was little. But just an idea of other paintings that I've done that were part of this illustration process. I still have this painting at home. The others you've seen are all sold. That sold. There's a lot of cats. People like cats. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, I had a, a newspaper contact me. I was still living in Boynton. The kids were little. I'm talking quite a while back at that time. And they came down and they called me the quack artist because I was painting so many ducks. <laughs> ducks and cows and everything. So they came out to my farm because I had a farm and actually I had all my chickens. I had over 300 chickens. I had ducks and turkeys and you name it. So I, I really, I, actually my kids were in 4-H and we showed in 4-H and we had the best chickens in the county actually. We get all the blue ribbons. So, so chickens and all kinds of paintings. This was one that I really liked with the kids. It's called Watch Your Step. So that's just an idea of some of the, some of the paintings and this illustration. You're welcome to come on down. The book is here. You can look through it and be able to see other images. And I have more at my home gallery too. So that's my Amish collection. Uh, this cat up here, you can see the cat? This cat is a um, portrait I did of the cat that was one of my clients. I go to Louisiana almost every year in Louisiana and uh, do portraits for people and then um, this cat was sitting on the couch watching me all the time. I was taking photographs of the little girl that I was working with. And I thought he was beautiful, so I painted him too. I call him the lookout. And he's been really popular in uh, licensed images. Now, this goes back to home interiors again. And what they would do, they would actually tell me what they wanted to paint. They would want these colored flowers. They wanted a gazebo. They had to have a baby, uh, baby uh, swans. So I had to come up with an idea to fit their needs in their size. And then they would sell that at their, at their home shows. So that's an example of one of those again that I got commissions and royalties on. And this is the same thing. They were the, the, that year, there was a big thing with hydrangeas. So they said, okay, we need hydrangeas. We need the green and the blue and the purple. So this is one of two hydrangea paintings that I did for home interiors. So these all have a, have a significance to me and my history as an artist. But I'm at the point where I've got so many paintings that I really would like to sell some of them but not find a nice forever home. <laughs> okay. So here, this goes back to Louisiana. In Louisiana, for uh, five years, I'd go out to uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana, and I would paint the bottoms. I would paint racehorses for the Kentucky Derby, and we had a big Kentucky Derby party, and there were big Kentucky Derby hats, and those fancy hats. And uh, every year, I would donate the painting to the organization that would help raise money for children that had a traumatic experience in their life, so they could have help. And uh, that particular organization that I worked with had a big barn, a beautiful stable, and so it kind of went with the idea we have a, a Kentucky Derby party in the big barn. I would paint the whole time while the, the afternoon was going on, and then they'd auction off the painting. This is one that never got to the auction. Um, 2000, uh, this past year, the auction was called off because of COVID, so we never got out there. So I guess you did a painting and took a painting with me to paint too. So I, I, I often donate more than one. Up uh, here, this is Pondy Hunt. Tommy Chunt, I did this about 2004. You know, I did this, this was recently, it was 2004. So I have an impression of 6,000 from you sometimes, same as in the uh, picture of the Kentucky Derby picture. And um, that was, I did a commission for these people, a different photograph that I worked from. And I just like the sunlight this time of day. It's kind of something that catches my attention and my imagination. So I did two paintings, one for me and one for them. So I like to paint horses. The horses, uh, any horse painting that I sell, I donate 50 percent to the to uh, any horse uh, preservation organization that you would like to write a check out to. You write a check to them, not to me, so they get the benefit and you get the benefit too. You get to totally tax the double painting that you buy. So if you know anybody who likes equestrian art, they might like to find some of my equestrian art to work with. Then more equestrian art. A little bit more. All the paintings I'm showing are for sale. This this is yeah, it's, it's too it's bad. It's making it's Actually, putting a glare. That's better, isn't it? Right. You can see okay. that one, but yeah. the other one. Going down below it's better. Okay. So I did this is a pair of Mustangs from South Dakota when my daughter graduated college uh, back seven years ago, I guess. 
Uh, we want to, I said, I said for your uh, graduation present, let's go out west and uh, teach you some photography. So we went out west for two weeks and we traveled north and south Dakota, went to Mount Rushmore, uh, had a buffalo nearly run me over. But um, th this was one of the many photographs I took from that experience. And we had just a, a wonderful time together. And took, we had, I, one herd of horses come over the hill that we were starting to walk down, and you couldn't see them, but you could hear this rumbling. And then a herd of about 30 horses came up over the hill right at us. Had some really cool experiences. <laughs> so that, that's one of those. And then this one down here, I call this fantasy ponies. These are actually three ponies that are half winners that are mine. I had this mare, I bought her in Canada at an auction. I went up and, and bought her. And then she had a baby, and this is another baby, I guess. I did raise half of her horses for a while. I had to uh, sell my half of her horses last year when my husband uh, passed away. I knew everybody kind of watching it a little bit. I had half of her horses for over 20 some years. And so this is my memory of those horses, and it's, I actually call them my nightmares because they're mares. The female horses are called mares, it's nighttime. But um, <laughs> that was a fun painting to do. I put them in my round pen. And then the round pen, I could make them go in a circle. I took one at a time, take a photograph of the running, and then I made the composite of that and put it together and get the picture I want. They were not in the work. So that was all made up. So I do a lot of painting where I actually create the backgrounds and, and create the, the uh, environment for things that I paint because of the illustration back there. Any questions you might have? So you can interact some. Doing good. Okay, I did a whole. See, from about 2006 to 2010, I did a lot of botanicals. I did one year mostly orchids, and at another time I did mostly uh, fruit. I, I, one summer, I came home and I put a bunch of fruit on my black marble uh, granite tabletop, and I saw the reflection, the sun coming through the window, and I was like, oh my goodness, that is so cool, the reflection. So I ate fruit all summer and painted it on my kitchen countertop. So uh, I don't have any of my fruit paintings left, but I have a few of my orchid paintings left. And um, so, so this is a uh, 30 by 40. I like painting big because I like the impact of it. And I have a few more that I'll show you. So let's take a look at a couple more of the orchid paintings. This orchid painting here, this yellow one, uh, I did, I think it was about 2007 and for Artie Bra, and they actually, actually I painted it for me, but Artie Bra, Asked permission, and they had it on a billboard coming into uh, South Florida out of a turnpike. So then that was just kind of neat driving down the turnpike and seeing your great big painting blown up on a billboard. But it was to advertise already brought. And uh, this was also shown in the Edna Hilbo show. It's called uh, Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow because this particular import work actually changes its color as it ages. Oh. I just love the way the light shines through it. Uh, this is another one I did for uh, home materials and greeting cards. I did several different sunflowers. This is a red one. I had a gold one, and a gold one is sold. But um, it just gives you an idea of the different versatility that I do with my work. I really love the backlit situation with sun coming through, so I often look for that when I get getting ready to choose a subject. And then this is another orchid. This orchid I went down in. Uh, Key Largo took a painting uh, to a client and they had this orchid out in their trees and it caught my attention because I love the vine that was looking, this, this was part of the deep orchid, but this vine that was growing in the tree at the same time, I thought made a really neat composition. So I painted that and that's been in my home all this time. So I haven't gone to many shows at all, but I'm at a point that I do want to downsize. I've got a lot of paintings, so uh, if, if you know someone that's looking for some orchid paintings, I am sure got a few. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Right now that I'm working on is Florida. I decided actually in 2010 that I love Florida, I grew up in Florida, and I want to become known as a Florida artist. Not just an artist that lives in Florida, but an artist that loves and paints Florida and wants to bring Florida to other people. So I, I started doing little plein air. This is River Bend Park. These are uh, just small little paintings that I did rather quickly. But I started kayaking during COVID and with kayaking, I'm going back a lot of the rivers that are otherwise hard to get to. And I now I'm into a mode of wanting to paint a lot of the rivers here local in, in South and Central Florida. I've gone up all the way to Hillsborough, uh, up in uh, Central Florida, and I've got some really interesting pictures. You catch that too? So this is this is the St. Lucie River right here. Okay, let's get some This is from Apalachicola. And this is, this is from St. Mary's, uh, Lake Mary up in the middle. This was actually part of one of my very first plein air paintings. And then this in Apalachicola was a couple of years ago. 
that I did in their apological or painting environment. I didn't participate actually other than just the fast draw, but I had fun doing it. It was just a great experience being around other uh, playing their painters, and that's what really got me enthusiastic about playing their painters. And that's actually about three, four years ago. So that's really when I started getting involved. Going back here to, Port, to the St. Lucie River, I'll have to back up a little bit. So this is the St. Lucie River. It's a 48 by 60. And it captured the St. Lucie River in the late afternoon where the clouds are starting to get a little bit of color, but they're not a sunset yet. And um, that was a hard thing. People ask me, how long does something take? So these little plain airs I do over here, over there, I might spend like, two hours on those. And this I might spend 40 or 50 hours. And more because I'm really dealing with a lot of green. Green for me, to me, is a very difficult color to work with when you're trying to make different layers of green. And being able, you can't take it from a photograph, even from light, you still get too much green. So it's just a matter of trying to balance that as an artist and, and, and create depth and also directional forces in the painting. So that same we see. This is a, a real name of mine, too. This is, uh, I call him Nine World Man. I had never seen a white blue heron. I didn't know such a thing existed. I went down to Key Largo to take photographs for a client that wanted me to paint a frigate. And his captain, he gave me the boat for the, actually it was a yacht, for the, for, for the week and for the weekend for the captain. And we went out and we photographed the human waterways down there in Key West. And we went out and, and actually photographed frigates that I did my paintings from. But this guy was one of the ones I took the photographs of in the inland waterway. And I couldn't believe it when I saw a heron and the captain said, no, that's a, that's a heron. I thought it was an eagle. And he said, no, that's a heron. That's a white heron. And they're kind of vicious and they're, and they're very, <laughs> they're more vicious that we're not as friendly as a blue heron. But anyway, I just love the way he stands out there in that mangrove because the mangroves down there in Key Largo were the challenge more than the bird you paint. And this little guy was up at Wakiva Springs. Went up there right after the Apalachicola trip, stopped and took, uh, took a day to do some photography over the key of the strings. I got some beautiful photographs there that I, I've done several uh, wildlife and bird paintings from. And this little wood duck, I really loved all the reflections. I, a lot of times when I choose a painting, I'm trying to play with light, I'm trying to play with something I think is difficult and see how I can handle it. So I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a lot of texture in this painting and various textures, and then the brilliance of the bird. I, I just love that little bird. This is one of my newest paintings down here. It is Ten Mile Creek. Ten Mile Creek is a, is a creek uh, just north of St. Lucie, uh, Port St. Lucie. It's one first time, first uh, pack and paddle kayak trip I did with the group. And I was just amazed at the natural beauty of wild Florida. Uh, it was hard to paint, again, because it's so green. <laughs> but the uh, day was a rainy day. We had some storm clouds. And after the storm, the sun came out and it hit this, this it was even brighter than I painted it. It hit this brilliant green. And I actually went ahead and gave in and painted it the brilliant green, even though I tend to sometimes not want to have a green quite that brilliant. But I, I feel very good about it. And there's a lot of osprey there. So I don't know if you can see them, but I added a couple of little osprey. I like to add birds to my paintings when it's appropriate and when it helps give me a focal point area better, a little stronger, because it makes me feel like there's air and light and like there's movement in the picture. So I really like that feeling of light in here. Ah, oh, up top, this was fun. I, some of the greatest experiences I've had was coming back from our arc shifts because I don't sleep good. I wake up early in the morning and I start driving home in the dark. And the morning starts coming up and you get fog and you go, you, so you see that atmosphere that normally you wouldn't be out seeing. So I got to um, La Belle and after La Belle was heading over to Lake Okeechobee, so I was going on the Lake Okeechobee area from La Belle to Lake Okeechobee. Uh, if the fog was so thick that I decided to stop my car and I could see like just trees in the distance a little bit. And I started taking pictures. When I got home and started playing with this on my computer, I saw this steer here, or bull, probably. And, and that's what made me fall in love with the picture, because I call this uh, the bachelor in paradise. And he was by himself standing under that tree. And I love the fogginess, and I love dealing with atmosphere. So I did quite a few atmosphere paintings during that time. And I will probably go back and do more atmosphere paintings. But that just, it's just sometimes it's like when you're not looking for the subject, but you see it, and you just got to stop and do it. The other thing that happened on another trip home from an art show, uh, another thing where I was driving home late at night, and I was on this uh, west, east, yeah, west end of Lake Okeechobee, and I saw the most amazing lightning show I've ever seen in my life. I had to stop and watch for 20 minutes. 
I've never seen such a blast of colors, different types of sheet lightning, different types of, of uh, the bolt lightnings. It was like the best show I've ever seen. So going to art shows can be very difficult, but sometimes it's quite amazing what you see because you're out there times you wouldn't be out there otherwise. This is Santa Maria Island, and uh, my friend and I went over there last year on the bottom here, and uh, we uh, walked the island and just had a wonderful day. We went over there and picked up frames there. We get frames over there that are great in the area. And we had a beautiful morning that got up really early. And there's actually a little bird in this painting, and I'm speaking of putting them in it, but in the, in the photograph there. I really like the idea that just it's those three chairs are waiting for friends to get together and have a morning coffee. So I call it morning coffee. And, and this was actually what I enjoyed the most about this painting was the texture of the sand and the texture of the seagrass, because I love texture, so that's an important part to this picture. And then I had a lot of fun with this one. I love going up to Coral Cove and Bowen Rocks and getting up there early in the morning, and uh, I'm always looking for wildlife, and particularly birds. And when I was walking, these little guys were all sitting on that rock, and I was lucky enough to capture them just as they took off, and the waves, I had to add the waves because they weren't in the picture product up, but I feel like that makes the composition really work. And I was really excited when I added them, but I didn't have any photographs, I just started painting, it's like, oh my goodness, my memory's working, I can do this. And that's just a great feeling as an artist, when suddenly you feel like, I can paint without looking at anything. So that was a, a, a little bit of a milestone for me again. That first happened back in uh, 2007 when I was painting a picture for the Amish series. I had a little girl sitting with a kitten on a wooden step. Actually, it was a brick step. And she had just a white t-shirt on. I was making her into an Amish child. So I had to put a, a blue Amish dress, a little blue Amish hat. She was holding one kitten. And it wasn't working because it was just, it didn't have that feel. And I decided it needed a quilt, so I started painting a little Amish quilt underneath her and added two more kittens. I was amazed. That was the very first time I was able to paint out of my mind. So you don't know you can do it to you try. So people need to uh, use their memory a lot and, 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 and be able to just see what happens when you do that. Because it's, it's an exciting feeling. This little guy, what caught my attention about Breezy Day Seagull is that the wind was blowing so hard, so you see the wind blowing here, and they were blowing his feathers up, and they're just swirling around. So I just thought he he was interesting just because of the feathers blowing, and it gives me movement and action. And I like to get as much action in the painting as I possibly can. The little guy up here, I just love the sparkle on the water. He's a little uh, ready, it's called a ready turn still. And I did a, a lot mm -hmm. of birds about two years ago because I was invited to the Maryland Waterfowl Festival, so I took a, a lot up there, but these are two that I've got. And this is early morning. I went over to the beach in Palm Beach before the sun came up, watched the sun come up, and did this. Uh, I took quite a few pictures. I had my uh, granddaughter with me and daughter, and we were playing at Palm Beach. And I just loved the little bit of turquoise and the gray. In fact, the painting most in grays and, and values very strong. And it was really funny because I thought these were dark rocks in my photograph. And then when I took, when I took a trip to the beach afterwards, I realized that they're really very light pale brown. It was just the, the strength of the sun really put them dark. So it was a surprise for me. But I like it. I like it. It's gray. I like it very better than the brown. So this is artistic license. <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes when I'm going to paint an ocean, I'll take a particular part of the ocean and maybe do a piece of that ocean and just do it for practice and do it, and do it quickly. And I usually don't want to allow myself more than an hour or an hour and a half, maybe two hours at the most. And I just try to get a, a certain pattern design, like this little painting on the top. Let's see that for you, see? This little painting at the top is called Breakpoint. I have done a 72 inch painting of this, but that was just one part of the wave when I was trying to practice the reflections a little bit, the sunlight changing from the photograph, not doing just what the photograph had and what would what, what it come up with. So I thought that painting over at the Sabarin Gallery in Driftwood Plaza. So if you want to go by the Sabarin Gallery, uh, I'll have a show next month there that's just kind of more my work and you'll be able to see it. But it's a, like I said, it's a large painting, 72 inches. And then a little painting here. I was playing turquoise and something, just little waves. Next thing I want to do is do some big, angry waves. <laughs> right now, I've been painting little, calm <laughs> waves. I have one at home I've started, and uh, maybe I'll have that ready in time for the show at the Sabarin Gallery. It's, it's not the, the great point at the uh, shore, it's out in the ocean more past it, and you see some big, big uh, rollers coming in, really nice. Okay. Okay.
play down. Um, I really want to push Cajol in there. Turmoil in the, in the painting that's recent. I did that for, for my art show season last year, and didn't get to do the art show season. Uh, I did two paintings. One sold, I sold already. I've got this one still for that season. And I just really love the contrast of the different wave buildings, right? I'm sure they're not really big waves, but I like the way the foam dance and the colors change. So, I, and particularly I enjoy playing with this part of the foam that was a little bit different. So I don't know how much you can see on your pants on the camera, but come into the gallery and take a look in the gallery and be able to, to see these paintings up close. I went to uh, Connecticut and went to the Norman Rockwell Gallery in his home back or had to be 10 years ago. And to see Norman Rockwell paintings up close, there's nothing like looking at them right. It was just awesome. The man, the man is not just an illustrator. He was a, an incredible colorist and color, incredible person with values and could tell a story too. So he, he, I, I was so impressed, over and above what I was already impressed about Norman Rockwell. Just, just come see things up close. See the brush stroke of an artist. See the, the multiple colors you can't see in a photograph. It's just like painting in plain air. We can go out and paint plain air, and we see so much more than if we see, take, take a photograph and paint from it. When I paint, I really try to paint as if I am there painting in plain air. I put a certain urgency in it. I try to put my energy into it as if I'm doing the same thing as if it was a plain air painting. And I don't follow the photograph more than sometimes get the general layout for my value pattern. And I find if I paint from my heart and paint from my memory of what I see, I'll get a much stronger painting. So, and, and that you'll see better when you see a painting rather than just flat if you come in and see the brush stroke. Uh, 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 this was a lot of fun. I took that, 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 these were both COVID paintings I did during COVID. And I love the, the reflection. This was also when I went down to the Keys that I took the photograph, but I hadn't had time to, pay, to actually paint it. So that's when I took the mango man photograph. I took this guy at the same time, and the reflection was so neat. So I really had fun doing that. And I wasn't sure, you know, when I started painting, I said, like, how am I going to do this? I don't know how to paint that. You know, but, you know so it's funny how when you just get yourself where you're just doing it, it just comes natural. It, start, it starts all piecing together. So that's what, you know, that's what happened there. Um, then I've got this Pelican fellow. He came from when I went over to Santa Maria. He went, we went down to the docks and looked at some of the boats. I've got another one of another Pelican I'm going to do. I've got him sketched out. I haven't done it. But I just went ahead and wanted to put the texture in the background with him. And I've had so many people here ask me to paint a Pelican. Ah. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I don't have, I didn't have a pelican, so COVID gave me a chance to paint a pelican, just for being a pelican, not for flying in my painting, I paint them flying in my painting, but I haven't painted a pelican for a pelican before. And then if you come in, you'll see a lot of texture, a lot of colors in his wings, and that makes that, to me, an interesting painting. But it's just the fact that it's a bird, a photograph, not so much, but I, I love the texture. And I try to get the different texture in the background, the texture of the wood, the texture of these feathers compared to those feathers, little soft textures that so that was a play of textures more than just painting a pelican. I have to, I have, to have my own fun. <laughs> and this is a, a favorite of mine. I, I, this looks so great in my house. I love this painting because I feel like I'm right back out at uh, the, the park over there that we'll be right today painting. And it just feels like, and that was another one of those things where I just, with a friend, another artist friend, I said, come on, let's go over to the park and, and see what the sunset's going to be like. And what a great sunset that night. I got several pictures from that that turned out really great. I get a commission from it, so I'm anxious to go and get the commission. But that just really makes me feel like I'm there again at the park. And I, the size to me is so important. When you paint a larger size painting, I, it's so so different than a plain air. One of the reasons I don't do a lot of plain air is, it, there's different reasons to do it, but I do a lot of big paintings, is because I want the immediacy of feeling like I'm actually there in the picture and being able to walk into it. And I feel like I did when I was there. And that to me comes when I do something new. I, I learn, I do plain air, but I feel more even as being there when I do a big painting. I just love the size of a big painting. Um, this painting was another, let's take, let's take a look, yeah, two more little paintings to show. This is another painting that's more commercial looking. <laughs> you won't like this, but it was done for a Zorba stone for coasters. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you, know, but, you know, there's all, Royalties are not a bad thing for an artist. They build up and, and continue coming in year after year, and, and it's really nice to get those royalty checks every month. So I did a lot of check, a lot of um, work that I could get royalties from. So that just gives you an example. This is a really old painting. But I love the, the gold and the red and the play of color. Again. I don't just try to 
copy a photograph, and I put that photograph away and try to get my color to move, and I love texture, I love brush strokes. One last painting. Oh, well, there's two more. Actually, mm -hmm. if you want to turn around, we've got a pair of, let's turn all the way around and we'll look at the pairs and we'll put it mm. Don't get busy. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see this little hammock here. Mm -hmm. But we went down to, um, uh, there was, I think, 12 of us artists. I got invited by another artist last moment to join them at a playing air event in the Keys. And we went, I think it was Key Largo, and we had a, we had about three houses on a private little island. And it was just a, a weekend of pure joy, being able to go outside and, and see the sunrise in the morning, see the sunset in the evening, and be able to paint. And this was kind of my feeling of that weekend, that little, little hammock of being able to relax. I did several other, uh, that I just brought in this one of the hammock that I just have a feeling that it just creates a nice atmosphere. And a, and a relaxing feeling. And there again, I'm playing with some color situations. It looks kind of dark when I look at the photograph on, online. But there's a lot of really cool colors, not, not, not really much brown, just a play of, of warm and cool colors in this painting that I think makes it interesting for me as an artist to paint it. And here's my lip touch. Ah. I should get, get it right. There you go. Ah. So this makes one big painting if you put it all together. and trip tiches is that you can actually hang them one on top of each other in a certain space. I did a trip tiche for the people that bought it. So it was one big long painting, 72 inches long, two, 324 by 24 squares, but they actually liked it going straight up and down on the wall. It makes it an interesting piece that they're all kind of, they kind of compatible together and look good. So uh, this was one of my early oceans actually, but I really like it. I like the feeling of the waves. I really feel like it captures the light coming through. And I had so much fun learning how to do the foam down here and capture, trying to capture the waves here. I think I'm a little bit looser now than I did then. Uh, this was only two years ago, but it's neat to be able to see your own work change as you go along. So that is what I've painted, and that's my show. I've got lots more you can see. If you want to come to my home gallery, I'll try to probably do a home gallery show and, and, and be able to invite you out there if you get in touch with me and want to come. And I also, if you come into the gallery, I've got several books. This is a portrait type book I did. It's called A Love Like No Other. It's about mothers. It was done for the Moths Association. They hired me, they came to me and said, can you paint for, for we want to do a book, a little short stories by mothers that tell stories of how they feel, this goes this way, how they feel about children. So that's a portrait. These are little girls in my Sunday school class that I got proposed for me. And I did a lot of mommies and little girls just pictures of, of the, the part of being a mother, all the special things, and the stories are wonderful stories. And I'd grab people at an art show and say, hey, would you mind posing for me? I'd like you to walk that way and let me take your picture. And that's, I mean, when, when you're desperate doing illustrations, you keep, grab people in any position you can and try to get a photograph that you can work from. And just, you know, endearing situations with children and mothers, that's a little pregnant woman, and being able to, create a lot of portraits. This is one of my favorite. I still have this and would sell it. It's called The Music Lesson. That is my little girl. She is now a mom with two little girls. <laughs> but I used to go to horse shows and she'd get so filthy dirty. I put her in my Tupperware bowl and washed her up. <laughs> that's a, that's a, a little gal I did a portrait commission out. And I love the time we spent trying to just get to know her and make her feel comfortable. And I painted a picture of mommy reading her a book. And I did that because I was painting these illustrations. I needed them. There's my horse. She's the same horse that's in the picture of the, mm. of the nightmares or fantasy ponies. And she became one of my pictures. And a little the picture of brotherly and sister love. So it gives you an idea as an illustrator of who I am. Just a little bit different than just a uh, Florida artist. But this is where I came from. And there's lots more. Come into the gallery and see the different pictures that are here so you have an idea. Oh, this is my son. This is when my daughter came home from the hospital. Mm -hmm. I have a wonderful collection of my own kids 
that I painted for my illustrations to use in books. So I'm kind of lucky that way. I got, them, I got another one called um, The Grandparents, uh, Promises and Prayers for My Little Grandchild. So I did a whole bunch of my, of my kids with the grandparents. And a Christmas book. How are we doing for time? Okay. Are we doing good? Mm -hmm. So this this is my this is this is my very first book that I illustrated. It's called Once Upon a Christmas. It was a real joy because I had some really great authors in here. Pearl Buck was one of the authors. You probably know Pearl Buck. There's a lot of good ones. And that gives, gives you an idea of how many different illustrations I did. I had about two months to get all the illustrations mm. done. I had to find the copy and get them all done. But that was when my kids were little. I was earning my living by myself. And whatever it took to get a job done, I just did it. And so, and that, in the meantime, I'm still doing portraits during that time. And this is a pastel painting I did. So I did work in pastel. I did work in watercolor. I did work in whatever medium. Sometimes I could do fastest or it would dry quicker. And most of these I tried to get done in a day's time and then touch up the next day just to be able to, to meet those deadlines. And an illustrator has to do that. And you can't always pick your subject. You have to paint whatever comes along, whatever the story indicates. So that kind of gives you an idea. Like, who, I would never want to paint a dress like that, but, but for the story, it was necessary. So it gives you an idea of that book. And then I've also done just an idea of licensing design. I've done a whole lot of, of images that are done for reading cards, for product design, I wrapping paper, you name it. If they asked me to do it, I would do it. <laughs> So just an idea of other work. I do Christmas is a really high item for licensing. And so if, if I, I do Santa Clauses or Christmas things, they go really well. Cats are, are nice. This is my kids when they were little. So we went to snow camp and I got to actually paint pictures of them. Can you see that? Mm. Let's see, go that way. Okay, so I paint pictures of them at snow camp. And of course, I've got Christmas cards. And I had these books and I'd go to the licensing show up in Atlanta, Georgia and bring my books with me and go to all the different uh, companies and show them my books and say this is what I do and they would hire me to do something else so that's kind of how I got work so just and one year back in in 94 till about 97 I painted oh so many gardens <laughs> uh, every garden was visited and painted love the gardens and here's some of my orchid collections you can see some more of the orchids that I did and some more garden. So there's, there's more in this. I don't want to bore you. Let's see what's in this one. Oh, this has to do with uh, home interiors. Pictures I did for home interiors. So there's another gazebo painting. And some of my other flowers. So I don't paint just orchids. Whatever they want. Whatever they want to paint. And these are all flowers that I took photographs of myself or went out and painted live. This one here of the pink um, hibiscus, I was up at the Winter, Winter Park Art Festival. And I needed more flowers to paint, so I took out my paints and painted the flowers next to my tent. <laughs> and that was a plain air painting, actually, was painted next to my tent. So maybe that was one of my first. So we do things in themes. So that's irises, magnolias. So there'd be always a theme of different flowers that needed to be painted. They'd have red flowers or gold flowers, always, again, trying to meet whatever someone wanted to do. So it's been a busy, busy life. And if you want to see more, I've got books just on portraits. That's Grandma. She's in my house. She's not for sale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's some of my Amish pictures. And I go to the front. Some of my pictures. There's another picture from my Kentucky Derby pictures. Another horse painting. Portraits. Lots of portraits. Portraits of animals. Portraits of bad animals. Everybody loves their animals, so I've got lots of animals. This is a situation where, uh, can you see that tape? This is a situation where a little uh, boy had died just before his graduation mm -hmm. uh, in a car accident, talking on the cell phone, and mom wanted to capture his life. So I did it from the time he was little and brought it right around to where he was. So that was her, her, her ability to keep a memory of him. And I think portraits are one of the most significant things you can paint for people as, as a gift of all the things you can buy in your life. Nothing's like a portrait that you can share with your family, and then as you go, as, as the, like these kids are all growing up now. These are all my Louisiana kids that I painted, and you can see them having kids of their own. So it's really quite. These are Louisiana kids again. All different situations. So if you give a portrait, 
You are giving a gift for a lifetime, not just, just for your life. You're getting to enjoy it for your life. They're getting to enjoy it. But remember that they last for generations to pass down. I have a portrait of my uh, great-great-grandfather from about 1810 hanging in my house. Uh, it is uh, a grandfather poll that came over on my grandmother's side, from my mother's side, from Poland, or from um, Germany, I guess. And I know what he looked like. You know, and, and so it's gone down through many generations. So when you give a portrait, think of uh, something lasting that's going to mean more than so many other things that we buy to try to share. So I hope you enjoyed my life story a little bit. What I've done as an artist, this covers um, about 31 years, actually, of art. So, and what I did to make a living as an artist and to make things happen, and, it, and it's been a great way to go. So I hope you enjoyed what I've done. I hope you enjoyed the little show here in the studio. I really want to thank Peg and her whole staff for making it possible to do the show and for them actually uh, giving me a booth to get things going and, and, and get involved. And, and, and it hadn't for Peg, I wouldn't have done the Zoom class. I wouldn't have done the studio uh, show. And it's nice to share because arts all over us. And how do you do it? You know, how, how do you make a life as an artist? Now, I will be doing a talk on Wednesday, you need to check with the Wellington Art Society to get a link to that, but there will be a talk on how to make a living as an artist and a short demonstration for a 45 minute Zoom if you want to join that. Okay. Are there any questions? Thank you, Laurie. Thanks for putting up with a long talk. <laughs> Should I finish this? Hi, Sharon. Yes. So good to see you again. Okay. Can I finish this? Okay, this is finished.